So, you're going to Thailand. How exciting! But you're not sure which island to visit? Let's talk about it together. I have lived and stayed on over 20 Thai islands and can help you choose the perfect spot for your holiday. In this video, I'm going to show you Thailand's most popular islands. Then, after our island tour, we're going to compare places based on your preferences. Family-friendly destinations, romantic getaways, adventure travel, etc. Disclaimer. This video is quite long and we're going to visit over 20 Thai islands. If you have already picked an island you're interested in and want to learn more about it, please have a look at my detailed travel guide for the island of your choice. I have uploaded individual videos of most of the islands we're going to talk about today. Okay, I'm going to go jump on my computer so we can start our Thai island trip. Let's go! Thailand has hundreds of islands, so how to choose where to go? Well, this video is here to help. We're going to start our island tour by visiting three tropical islands close to Bangkok, Koh Chang, Koh Mak and Koh Kut. Those three beautiful islands are situated in the province of Trat. You can fly to Trat airport or you can catch a morning bus in Bangkok and arrive in Trat five hours later. From here, you can catch a ferry or a speedboat to the islands. Kuchang is a large mountainous island covered by an unspoiled rainforest. The island has many hiking trails and waterfalls. The landscape is mostly composed of forest hills and stone cliffs. Be ready to scooter on some steep roads here. Kuchang is beautiful. There are plenty of beaches and tourist activities. Boat tours, kayaking, snorkeling, Thai cooking classes, Muay Thai training. You can find cheaper accommodation options catered to backpackers as well as high-end hotels. There are lots of bars and a dynamic party scene, with live music, DJs and night entertainment. The Muko Chang National Marine Park surrounding the island offers fantastic snorkeling opportunities. The waters around Koh Chang, Koh Mak and Koh Kut are extremely clear. If you love diving, there are a few shipwrecks you can go see. The national park includes many islands and islets that are uninhabited. Well, almost uninhabited. I know, how strange! A deer on the beach! There is a small herd of deer living in the national park. My favorite beach on Kuchang is down here. I like the sandy beach because it's very long and there was no one around during my visit. However, it's a remote part of the island and you need a scooter to get here. Kuchang is one of the largest Thai islands in the Gulf of Thailand. Like most Thai islands, Kuchang has a big fishing community. Fishermen live right on the water in the small colorful houses on stilts, with their colorful boats parked outside their doorstep. Squid fishing is a big business here. By the way, Chang means elephant in Thai. This island is named Chang because from afar the silhouette of the island looks like an elephant head. The island's coast is dotted with beautiful beaches and a few small villages. We loved exploring this place by motorcycle and fell in love with the steep hills. Moving on to Komak. Komak is a private island owned by five families. This island is tiny compared to Koh Chang. It's also pretty flat and easy to get around. No traffic, no hills and no steep roads. Komak is a good option if you need to relax completely. The wide sandy beaches here are very quiet, even in high season. There are not many resorts on Komak and never many tourists around. The island is gorgeous, covered with coconut groves and rubber tree plantations. You can witness how rubber is collected around the island. The white latex is mixed with chemicals, then hand rolled into mats and hung to dry. Komak has no pubs, no crowds and no noisy bars. There's virtually no nightlife here. There are no supermarkets either. There is not a large choice of budget accommodation, mostly mid to high-end hotels. So plan ahead of time if you want to find a cheaper room in a guest house. My favorite beach on this island is the small beach in front of Lazy Day Resort. My second favorites are Ao Suan Yai and Ao Kao, the two main beaches of the island. Like Koh Chang, there are fantastic snorkeling and diving spots in the Mu Koh Chang National Marine Park you can reach from the island. Kumak is a great option if you want to relax. You can find peace and quiet here and good internet. Kokut is next on our itinerary. This island took my breath away. This is, hands down, my favorite island in all of Thailand. We had a blast here and did not want to leave. Like Koh Chang, the island has steep hills and dense jungles. 
their small villages and amazing, world-class, pristine beaches with crystal clear azure water. There are also waterfalls. After hiking in a steam jungle under Thailand's hot sun, it feels so refreshing to jump in. Kokuts is a predominantly Muslim island. There are no bars, no nightclubs, and no supermarkets. There are mostly mid to high-end hotels, and the available guest houses are pricey. This is a splendid island no one knows about, with limited tourism and amazing beaches. However, Kokuts is not the easiest to get around. There are a lot of steep hills, and not all the roads going to the beach are paved. It's a larger island, and you need a scooter to get around. Like Koh Chang and Koh Mak, Koh Kut offers great snorkeling opportunities and a fantastic water visibility. My favorite beach on Koh Kut is the beach in front of the Rimli Resort. The most popular beach on the island is here. Just FYI, Koh Kut is also home to a super luxury resort, Sonnevakiri. Let's move further south, towards Phuket and Pang Na. Phuket is a big island, very popular with tourists from all over the world. The island is very well set up for tourism. There are lots of hotels and accommodation options, plenty of beaches, and a lot of tourist activities and shopping streets. The island has a big airport and is very easy to get to from many destinations across Thailand. So why do I not like Phuket? Because there's a lot of traffic and big boulevards. Riding around on a scooter is a bit frightening if you are a novice driver. Also, I find Phuket overly commercialized. There are signs in Russian everywhere and the local Thai people have learned to speak Russian because of the huge tourist demand. To me, it's just not my idea of a Thai island atmosphere. On the other hand, because the island is big, it's a Disneyland and you can find almost anything here. Shooting guns, driving ATVs, lots of beaches, hotels, bars, a big party scene. Phuket is also a good stepping stone for snorkeling in the Similan Islands or going on day trips to places like James Bond Island and exploring the Pang Na Bay. You can catch a speedboat from here to many other islands, like Koh Yao Noi, Koh Yao Yai, Koh Phi Phi, Krabi, Koh Lanta, or even Koh Lipe. Let's move to Koh Yao Noi. The name means small, long island. You can see the entire place in a couple of hours. 90% of the island is Muslim. People living here are kind and welcoming. They are also very protective of their home and culture. Large hotels or bars are banned from this island. It's a fisherman community with a few rubber trees and mostly paved, narrow roads and limited tourism. This tiny island has only one sandy beach. The rest of the beaches around the island are made of a muddy bottom and some rocks. But you'll realize this only at low tide. At high tide, the shore looks lovelier. Koh Yao Noi is surrounded by dozens of smaller islets standing in the bay. It's romantic to see their silhouettes emerging from the water. The panorama surrounding the island is very photogenic. Despite the shortcomings, we fell in love with this tiny place and ended up spending over two months here during the pandemic. We had rented a beautiful villa in a gorgeous garden, five minute walk to the beach. By the way, if you'd like to know where we stayed during our one and a half year in Thailand, let me know. I would be happy to email you a list of all the accommodations we've used during our 18 months of exploring Thailand. You'll find information on how to reach me in the description of this video. Okay, we're off to Koh Phi Phi. The beach here is absolutely gorgeous. The island is surrounded by green-blue water with a fantastic visibility. Koh Phi Phi is a tiny island with two main beaches, five minutes walking distance from each other. There is one main viewpoint you can climb to above the town. And that's about it. You can walk across the entire island in a few hours. Koh Phi Phi is typically very crowded, but it's a gorgeous island worth seeing. What's even better is renting a long tail boat from here and cruising to the amazing island formations in Maya Bay. The water is so clear, you can see the corals and fish right off the boat. Going around these giant cliffs feels surreal. This place is magical. Koh Phi Phi has lots of accommodation options and rooms for rent for any budget. The island has a lot of restaurants, bars and diving schools. There are great diving and snorkeling spots around Koh Phi Phi. By the way, Koh Phi Phi is a kitty island. There are cute kitties everywhere here. And a piece of advice? Do not feed the monkeys. I was told that the tourist hospital here makes a lot of money from rabies shots, as there are monkey incidents daily. You don't want that on your holiday. Alright, let's head to Riley and Krabi next. Riley is a gorgeous place, surrounded by these giant rocks in the ocean. Riley is not technically an island, but it's separated from the mainland by an unpenetrable forest and rock cliffs. You need a speedboat from Aonang or Krabi to get here. 
Riley is both charming and a bit bizarre. Lots of monkeys walk around and feel home here. We were told to lock our hotel room windows. I enjoyed Riley a lot. The two main beaches here are long and sandy. The water is clear. There are great rock climbing schools around, several caves and the viewpoints you can hike to. Krabby Town itself is where you'll probably land if you're headed to Riley Beach. Krabby is huge, but the city center is small and walkable. To me, there is not much to do in Krabby. I would stay here only if I needed it between commutes to other places. We went to visit some of the popular beaches near town, but did not like them as much. Before we head further south, let's go first across the Suratani province and into the Gulf of Thailand. Our first island visit is Koh Samui. As you might recall, Koh Samui, together with Phuket, are my least favorite Thai islands. Similarly to Phuket, Koh Samui is a huge island with lots of traffic and tourists. The island has many beaches. A few of them are quite long, with soft white sand. There are also smaller, more secluded beaches with less tourists. For example, the areas around Tongson Beach and Bang Kao Beach are very quiet. I enjoyed the night markets and food streets on Koh Samui. There are also many colorful places to visit. One of the best day trips you can sign up for on Koh Samui is a full day tour of the nearby Angtong National Marine Park. It's a pristine archipelago composed of 42 islands. The nearby Koh Phangan is a big island with lots of charm. Koh Phangan has many beautiful beaches, tall coconut trees and wonderful markets. There are also many different areas to visit around the island. Please watch my detailed video on Koh Phangan, as there is a lot to cover. We spend a month and a half living here. This island is probably my favorite Thai island for a long-term stay. You'll need to learn to drive a scooter to get around, but the traffic is way less than places like Phuket and Koh Samui. Koh Phangan has a lot to offer. Hikes, waterfalls, fantastic markets, bars, and the famous full moon parties on Full Moon Beach. This is a lovely island I would go back to anytime. Let's stop at Koh Tao next. This is a mountainous island with countless hills and steep roads. Most of the island's landscape is covered by a thick jungle. Most of the roads are paved, but some are steep. The island is quite small and it's easy to scooter around the entire place in a day or two. The amazing underwater world here is the main attraction. Besides enjoying the beach, diving, snorkeling or other water sports, there is not much else to see on the island. The visibility of the water is fantastic. If you like snorkeling or diving, this island is for you. The best snorkeling spot for me is at the Japanese gardens on Koh Nang Yuan. As for diving, there are many dive sites around Koh Tao. My favorite beaches here are Sairi Beach, which is the longest and most popular beach on the island, Hinwon Beach, this tiny beach is very photogenic, and Tanote Beach. Let's head further south. Our first stop is Koh Lanta. This island is not big, but it's also not too small. It's not overdeveloped, which I really liked about it. It has beautiful beaches, a national park, and fantastic snorkeling off the coast of the island. Koh Lanta is another Muslim community, and you'll hear the mosques calling several times a day. The island's longest beach, called Long Beach, is about 4 kilometers long. You can walk an entire hour before you reach its other end. There is a big sea gypsy community that lives on Koh Lanta. Like many islands, squid fishing is a big commerce on the island. The squid boats go out at sea during the darker nights, when the moon is only a crescent in the sky. The fishermen attract squid with these lights attached to their boats. The snorkeling and diving sites on Koh Ha are my favorite snorkeling area in all of Thailand. At the Japanese garden in Koh Tao, you are very close to the colorful corals and you will see smaller tropical fish. Snorkeling at Koh Ha, you'll be looking at a different type of environment, with more hills, sharks and bigger tropical fish. We spent over five months on Koh Lanta, and I have a special place in my heart for this island. I'm going to show you the Trang Islands next. These are three lesser known but gorgeous islands you can reach from Trang. You can fly to Trang City from many Thai airports, or you can arrive here by bus or by speedboat from other Thai islands. Let's start with Komuk. Komuk surprised us with the beauty of its nature and marine life. The main white sandy beach on the island looks stunning. Komuk is a charming island with lots of wildflowers. 
The island is a bit messy though, with its quiet village life spilling onto the streets. It's not a very developed island, and not many tourists stay here. I personally loved it for that same reason, its authenticity. The main tourist attraction on Kumuk is the Emerald Cave. It takes a good 10 minutes of swimming under the cliffs to reach the cave. You have to make sure to time your entry and exit with the low tide. If you find yourself in the neighborhood, Kumuk is an island worth visiting. Kokradan impressed us with its clear water and fantastic snorkeling experience right off the beach. We did not want to leave. The island is a real paradise. Kukradan is an expensive island and we could only afford to stay here a few days. We made the best out of it and spent every minute in the water or exploring around. Kukradan has one main beach where most of the hotels are located. The island is expensive because each hotel needs to generate its own electricity and water. I am in love with this tiny island. If you cannot afford to stay here overnight, you can stay on Kumuk and pay for a day trip to Kokradan. The water around Kokradan is an amazing color and fills up your soul with joy. Given the chance, this is an island I would go back to anytime. The nearby Kohai has clear aquamarine water and powdery coral sand. Most of the island's rugged interior is overgrown with a thick jungle and is not accessible. The mountainous rainforest is inhabited by huge monitor lizards. There are seabirds and eagles and an abundant marine life around the island. This island is surrounded by other smaller islets, which makes the views very picturesque. The reef around the island is not as colorful as the neighboring Kokradan, and the visibility here often gets bad due to tidal and wave conditions. Kohai is another expensive island. Like Kokradan, there are limited hotels here, hence also less tourists around. There is no village here and there are no stores or markets. Both Kokradan and Kohai are just a long stretch of a beach with hotels on it. Let's make a quick stop on Kolibang. This is the fourth Chang island no one knows about. Kolibang offers the most local and authentic Muslim village experience you can find. Tourism is almost non-existent here. We stayed in a tiny guest house. No one spoke a word of English. People seemed surprised to see us here. Libang has these interesting floating fish farms. You can sit here and order fish to be cooked for you on the spot. We saw a lot of Thai people packing up fresh seafood specialties to bring them back to mainland. The island has fantastic seafood dishes and is known for its crab curry paste. On Kulibang at Lutai, the ocean simply disappears. How interesting! Are you tired yet? I'm going to show you one last Thai island before we summarize your holiday choices. Koh Lipe is a tiny island at the very bottom of Thailand. This is the last Thai island before you cross over to Malaysia. Koh Lipe is said to be the Maldives of Thailand because of the amazing color of the water and fantastic visibility. You can go snorkeling right off the beach. The island is beautiful, but it's not my favorite place. Koh Lipe looked a bit unkept, with lots of stray dogs running around. The island is further out at sea and the speedboat ride can be bumpy. Don't forget your motion sickness medicine if the sea is rough. I love the visibility of the water around Koh Lipe, but given the chance, I would not go back there. This island is expensive, typically very crowded. It's an effort to get there and it's a bit unkept. This tiny paradise is not well managed locally and unless things change, it's not worth the money or the effort. Just my opinion. Did you enjoy our island tour? There's a lot of information to take in, I know. So let's summarize everything together. Which are the best islands for a family vacation? I would go with Phuket, Koh Samui, Koh Phangan, Koh Chang, Koh Mak, and maybe Riley. I'm not a fan of Phuket and Koh Samui, but they are easy to get to and the tourism industry is developed on both islands, which makes them convenient for traveling with children. Koh Phangan and Koh Chang have several great beaches to choose from. These two party islands are friendly enough for a family holiday. And Kumak is very laid back and easily accessible from Bangkok by land. No need to fly to get there. And Riley is a really interesting destination for kids. It's a bit of an adventure island with monkeys and caves, but it's also comfortable enough for a family holiday. Which island should you choose if you're single and looking to have a good time? I would go to Kopangan. The island is famous for its full moon parties. Lots of young people from many different nationalities live on this island. 
there's a bit of a free spirit bohemian vibe going on there. You can easily make friends, take yoga classes, go out dancing and blend in. Ko Chang is another good alternative from Bangkok. Lots of backpackers come to this island and you can easily find friends. Ko Tao is another place when lots of travelers meet over drinks at night. There's a community of fun people, mostly scuba diving instructors and hotel managers. And uh, the same goes for Ko Phi Phi. What are the best islands for snorkeling and scuba diving? To me, the best underwater world is around Ko Tao, Ko Lanta, especially Ko Ha of Ko Lanta, Ko Phi Phi, Ko Kradan, and Ko Lipe. Best islands for remote work? I'd say Ko Mag, Ko Lanta, and Ko Pangan. You'll have a strong internet connection and a network of expats. Ko Lanta has a big co-working community and shared co-working spaces. The co-working group there is super welcoming and I know they organize parties and outings all the time. Check them out. I'll leave information in the description below this video. Best off the beaten path islands? Mm, I'd say Koyao Noi, Komuk, Kolibong, although be careful venturing there because it's not much set up for tourism, and Kopayan, uh, not to be confused with Kopangan. Then best islands to invest in real estate? I don't know where I was going with this one, but I'll give you my opinion. Kopangan, Phuket, Kolanta, Kosamui, and maybe Kochang. On Kolanta, I know a fantastic opportunity to buy some apartments and villas there. You can rent out when you're not on the island. My friends manage this beautiful property that is always full. So send me an email if you're interested and I can put you in touch. And last but not least, my favorite Thai islands. So my personal selection, number one, Kokut, number two, Kopangan, number three, Kokradan. I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for staying with me until the end. Remember to check out my individual travel guides for detailed information on a particular island. And if you'd like to discover all of Thailand, not just the islands, I welcome you on a tour with me of the entire country. During the pandemic, my partner and I were stranded in Thailand for a year and a half. We traveled the country from top to bottom and produced a movie called Time Out in Thailand. The movie has received very positive reviews from the public. And we even got an award at the Naturale Film Festival in Germany. The film was conceived to show you all of the most interesting places in Thailand while sharing with you our one and a half year adventure. The movie is available for rent on Amazon. I have added the link in the description below this video. Also, if you're interested to know our accommodation choices during our year and a half of traveling around Thailand, I'll be happy to send you a list of all the hotel rooms and Airbnbs, guest houses we've stayed at. You can find my contact details in the description below this video. Thank you again for your support. It means the world to me. Without the watch time and your subscriptions, this channel could not be possible. Thanks again and see you soon.